In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we multiply our input x by a number first and then plug into a parent function. Multiplication accomplishes stretches, shrinks, and flips. If I modify the x value before I plug into the parent function, that's going to give me a horizontal change. So this is going to accomplish some horizontal stretches, shrinks, and flips. The parent function I've chosen to use is the square root function. Once again, you should at this point be able to just sort of sketch that freehand. That's what the square root function looks like. You shouldn't need to rely on a table of values to know the shape of that graph. You want this to be your friend that you're very familiar with. I'm using the table of values because I want to be able to compare points on the parent graph to points on the transformed graph so that I can see exactly what's happening, and this just helps me make sure that I'm getting things to approximately the right scale. Just a reminder, when we're working with the square root function, the choices for x that we want are going to be non-negative numbers, because the domain only consists of non-negative numbers. We want to make sure that we include 0, because that's the point where the domain starts. And then we choose perfect squares for our x values so that the y values are nice. Square root of 1 is just 1. The square root of 4 is just 2, since 4 was 2 squared. And the square root of 9 is 3. So if I plot those points, here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. All right, so there's that function. Now, question 2 asks us to sketch g of x, which is the square root of 2x. And if you look on the worksheet, and I'll put it up here in case you didn't print it out, we're going to have a table of values with three columns now, x, 2x, and root 2x. So this first column and this last column are going to be the x and y values of the points that we're plotting. The middle column is just sort of a helper column. And the trick here is to remember that this is the thing I'm going to be plugging into the square root function. So this is the thing that I want to take on those nice values that we chose that it was easy to take the square root of. So I want these values to be 0, 1, 4, and 9. So this is what I've already filled in for you on the worksheet. And then you're left to fill in these columns. Now, this should be fairly simple, because we're just taking the square roots of these numbers, which we've just done a minute ago. That's 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to be getting the same y values, but they're going to be associated with different x values. And that's why this is affecting the graph horizontally. To figure out what those x values are, I need to recognize that these are the values of 2x. So I can write out an equation. Here, 0 is equal to 2x. To solve for x, I need to undo that multiplication by 2. So I'm going to need to divide both sides by 2. Now, 0 divided by 2 is still 0, so that doesn't actually change that x value. But with this next one, when 2x is equal to 1, to solve for x, again, I need to undo the multiplication by 2, which means I'm going to divide by 2. So x will equal 1 half. So the point 0, 0 is still on my graph, but now I have a point 1 half 1. So it's at the same height, has the same y value as this point, but the x value is half as big. All right, now here 2x is equal to 4. Solving for x, I get x is equal to 2. So I'm going to have a point at 2, 2. Again, that has the same y value as this point 4, 2 that was on the parent graph, but the x value is half as big. Notice in the formula, we're doubling our x value, but the result is that my points are associated with x values that are half as big. And the reason is because we have to work backwards. If we know what 2x is and we want to know what x is, we're undoing the multiplication by 2, which means we're doing the opposite. We're dividing by 2. So here, if 2x is equal to 9, again, I would divide both sides by 2. 
so x would equal 9 halves. So that's 4 and a half. So that's going to be right about here. So again, same y value as I had, but the x value is half as big. So this is going to be the graph of the square root of 2x, and that's going to accomplish a horizontal shrink. So just like with horizontal shifts, adding 2 moves things 2 to the left. Now, multiplying by 2 shrinks things by a factor of 1 half, the reciprocal of 2. So because when we modify the input, we have to undo that multiplication to solve for x, horizontal transformations are a little bit counterintuitive. Doubling the x value that we're going to plug in actually shrinks the x value that's associated with any given y value. So multiplying by 2x before we plug into the function shrinks the graph horizontally by a factor of the reciprocal of 2, or by a factor of 1 half. All right, so I'm going to have you try problems 3 and 4. Let me just get those written on the board in case you don't have the worksheet printed out. Let's see. Question 3 was h of x, which is the square root of 1 half x. So for that, I give you this table of values. We're going to set 1 half x, which is the thing we're plugging into that parent function, equal to those nice values 0, 1, 4, and 9. And then it's up to you to calculate the y values and the x values that you'll be plotting. Question 4 is k of x equals the square root of the opposite of x, or negative 1 times x. And so there, you've got this table of values. And again, we want the input to the square root function to be these nice numbers. Now, don't freak out when you see that negative sign. I know that the thing under the radical cannot be negative. But that doesn't mean that I can't write a negative sign there. Notice if x is a negative number, negative 1 times x will actually be a positive number. So what's going to happen is when you solve for x here, you're going to get a bunch of things that are not positive, so that when you multiply by negative 1, you're getting these familiar non-negative numbers that we can take the square root of. So go ahead and pause the video, work out these problems, and then tune back in and we'll compare answers. I filled in the tables for both problems and graphed problem 3. I haven't yet graphed problem 4 because the space I'm going to need to graph it is right now taken up by these tables. You'll notice for both of the functions, the y values that we get are exactly the same as the y values we got for the parent function. Because I'm not doing anything after I take the square root. I'm changing the input. All right, over here, you'll notice that if this is 1 half x, the x values are actually twice as big. Let's just take a look at this one. If 1 half x, let me do this in blue, if 1 half x is equal to 4, in order to solve for x, I would undo the multiplication by 1 half, which means multiplying by 2. So x would equal 8. So what happened is on the parent graph, I had this point 4, 2, now, on this transformed graph, I've got this point that has the same y value of 2, but the x value is twice as big. And that happens to all of the x values. Of course, doubling 0 is still 0, so that point didn't move. But everything else, the x value became twice as big, so we accomplished a vertical stretch. Again, a little bit counterintuitive, because I think of multiplying something by 1 half as making it smaller. But if I made x smaller before I plugged in to the square root, then what I started with had to be bigger so that I could make it smaller and still get these nice numbers. All right. When we look at k of x, which was the square root of the opposite of x, again, we're getting the same y values. But now, let's again look at this point. If the opposite of x is equal to 4, in order to solve for x, I divide both sides by negative 1 
or equivalently, multiply both sides by negative 1, x would be negative 4. So I'm associating these y values with the opposite x value. Let me just erase the table so that I've got some space to actually show that graph. So what's going to happen is this was my parent graph. Now here was the point 1, 1. Now I'm going to have a point negative 1, 1. Here was the point 4, 2. Now I'm going to have a point negative 4, 2. Here was the point 9, 3. Now I'm going to have a point negative 9, 3. And you can see what we've accomplished is a horizontal flip. Instead of opening to the right, now it's opening to the left. Notice a horizontal flip is a flip across the vertical y-axis. So it changes the graph horizontally by flipping it or reflecting it, is another thing we could say, across the y-axis. Changing the x values, but still having the same y values. One thing I should point out really quickly, when I graphed 1 half x, we got the point 18, 3. I just made a note here, it didn't fit on the board, so I said it was off the board. I am not here setting a precedent that it's okay to say, oh, I couldn't fit this point. When you're completing work to turn in, I expect you to set up your axes so that there's enough room to plot all of the points. I've got a finite whiteboard here, so I'm just going to beg your indulgence. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Make sure that you plot all points on any work that you submit.